Hello and welcome. You're watching Head to Head. I'm Carrie Oderman with UATV. 78 years ago, in the fall of 1941, Nazi soldiers began massacring Kyiv's remaining Jewish population. In the span of just a few days, over 30,000 Jews, mainly elderly, women and children, were killed. The massacre continued and over 100,000 eventually died at the site. The legacy of Babanyar has never fully been addressed. Today, to speak with us is Alexander Pasternak, historian, research projects coordinator, Babanyar Holocaust Memorial Center. Thank you very much for coming today. Thank you for the invitation. Um, what happened at Babanyar is a very difficult thing for Ukrainians to address because during the Soviet time it was more or less swept under the rug. Uh, how do Ukrainians, well, first let's begin, the Soviets were not keen to discuss Babanyar. Mm -hmm. What was their motivation for not mm -hmm. discussing this? Yeah. First of all, we need to understand actually the whole tragedy of Babanyar that it was uh, not only the one action which happened in these two days of 29th and 30th, but it's uh, actually the symbol of uh, Nazi occupation and Nazi uh, atrocities which took place in Kyiv during 1941-1943. And um, actually, uh, even today, historians uh, don't give the, uh, uh, the number, the exact number of victims who uh, died in, uh, in Babi Yar. So they uh, vary from uh, 40, 50 up to 150,000 uh, victims, including mainly Jews, Roma, uh, Romani people, Soviet prisoners of war, Soviet partisans, activists, uh, Ukrainian nationalists, hostages, and so on. And uh, we also need to understand that uh, during the war, uh, Soviet Union mainly Soviet power did nothing to protect Jewish citizens. So we, we need to understand that it was not um, uh, important to inform, fully inform Soviet citizens what happens uh, on the occupied territories, especially in Kyiv. So mainly uh, Soviet newspapers, they published and informed Soviet society about the tragedy, but they mixed Jews with, with uh, Russians, Ukrainians, and so on. So nobody uh, knew that uh, Nazis are trying to totally exterminate Jews as the nation. So uh, it was also the special Soviet policy uh, to, to create the image, the special image of the war in the view of um, uh, Soviet citizens. In their in, in their um, in their mind, because it was necessary to um, show the heroism of Soviet uh, soldiers. They are struggling for motherland and their readiness to die. And this idea was um, continuing after the war. And uh, uh, it was necessary to show that Soviet Union made the biggest contribution into the struggle against Nazism, and that's why. Uh, concentrate on the victims, it was not the path which Soviet power uh, actually chosen, have chosen. And that's why uh, the Jewish uh, victims, uh, tragedy of Bab and Yar, was a little bit, you know, uh, mixed with the um, uh, main, main uh, concept, concept of, uh, um, of the war, that Soviet Union was uh, the um, got the victory uh, a lot of people uh, lost their lives but they lost their lives for um, for the name of soviet power soviet state so the yeah. soviet union chose to approach the victims of Bab and Yar as soviet citizens and soviet not citizens, as part of their yes. jewish identity yep. in the meantime Many historians see what happened here in 1941, motivation for Hitler's final solution at the Wannsee mm -hmm. um, Conference, mm -hmm. as he um, saw that there was very little that stood in the way of eliminating this many people at one time. This then, he used this as a model and expanded on it. Do you agree with this takeaway? Well, we need to understand that actually Holocaust in Ukraine and uh, also in Soviet Union, um, started from the very beginning of Nazi invasion. So, uh, and uh, e even before the war, 
uh, Hitler and actually the Nazi power, they decided that they're going to exterminate all the Soviet Jews, Jews as the carriers of Bolshevik ideology. ideology. So they said that the uh, uh, Soviet state was created by Jews. And uh, to destroy this uh, Jewish power, it's necessary to destroy the, the Soviet state. And uh, it was actually one of the propaganda you know, tricks used by Nazis when they entered Ukraine and Soviet uh, territories to explain people why actually Nazis are treating with Jewish in such a way. They said, well, uh, look uh, at the, all these crimes which were conducted by uh, Soviet power. Jews are responsible for, for all the things. And the same situation was in Kyiv, actually. Uh, and uh, you mentioned the uh, Manzai conference, but t till the Manzai conference, Nazis already have exterminated and uh, killed on these areas of Ukraine and uh, uh, occupied uh, Soviet territories approximately one, uh, half a million Jewish uh, people. So up to 1942, January 1942, when the Wednesday conference um, actually took place, um, the huge amount of Jewish people were already dead here. So we can say that Holocaust started from, from our territories, mainly from Ukraine. Let's talk about a little bit of the topography of the area. Mm -hmm. Babin Yar was a large ravine outside of the city limits at the time. Yep. In 1941, and starting in September, Jews were asked to gather, and then they were ultimately massacred there. Um, mm -hmm. After the war, when the Soviets had returned to Ukraine, how was this area of land treated? What was done with it? Um, right now, it's a large park that's divided yep. into two sections. Uh, it's also the huge uh, topic which can be described in hundreds of books, actually, what was the, the attitude of Soviet power after the war. So uh, we need to understand that um, uh, this um, after, first after war uh, years, they were not uh, so critical for the memory, yeah? because uh, there were even ideas to create the monument. There are in Ukrainian archives, there are even documents which show that in 1945 uh, even some funds were just um, located to build the monument for uh, victims of Babin Yar. But step by step, uh, the anti Semitism um, policy, state anti Semitism policy, began to develop in the Soviet Union, especially from 1948 when the uh, anti-fascist Jewish committee was uh, closed by Stalin's regime. And after that, um, um, the, 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 the new view, uh, wave of repressions took place in the Soviet Union, and one of the top, uh, tops of this, and uh, one of the ep um, uh, apogee of this uh, uh, policy was the so-called um, uh, case of, of medics, when Stalin actually and his uh, followers, they began to look in for traitors, spies among uh, Jews. So it was the special, actually, you know, uh, they were suspecting Jewish intellectuals into sp uh, in uh, some activity against Soviet Union. And a lot of people were imprisoned, some of them executed, and actually it was the huge wave of anti-Semitism in uh, uh, Soviet Union. That's why the topic of Bab and Yar, step by step, was just... Um, um, what went, went down, actually. Okay, the, the yeah. actual area of Bab and Yar was then later separated by a major street. Do you believe yeah, that was intentional, with Soviet city, city planning? Yeah. In, in, late 40s, in late 40s, actually, Soviets decided to use Bab and Yar as the place for um, the waste uh, from the uh, plants, uh, brick plants, uh, not far from the Babin Yar. And in late 50s, they began to pour the mud into the uh, Babin Yar, Yar ravine. Uh, also, uh, the new, new streets were created. So, for example, there was the street of Melnikova, which was the main actually route of Jews to Babin Yar. It was ex uh, extended. And um, a few few roads, uh, few roads um, 
uh, not near Babenyar also were created. So we can say that the area of Babenyar was changed a little bit. In the 50s, they also, Soviets also created, built up the new uh, residential, um, uh, residential quarter called uh, Seretz, Seretz uh, residen re residential house. And uh, now a lot of people are living there and uh, just in front of Babin Yar and don't even actually know that they're living on the bones, we can say, because on the territory of this Seretz uh, re residential buildings uh, there was a um, uh, Seretz concentration camp where a lot of uh, prisoners of war, different anti-Nazi activists, Jews who survived were sentenced there and uh, um, were uh, mm, imprisoned till 1943. And part of these people, they were used in late August 1943 to, uh, to destroy the evidences of Nazi crime. So those who had to exhumate bodies from the, gra uh, from the graves and just burn them and uh, destroy the, all those remains of uh, bodies which were actually buried in 1941-42. You, you mentioned three. the brick making yeah. factories there. Their, their, their water runoff created silt pools which yeah. then later in 1961 created a flood of that area yeah. where 1,500 people died. From the um, results of that flood there must have been evidence of what happened at Babin Yar. Is that discussed at all in history? Well, uh, the main uh, thing that uh, when Soviets came, came back in 1943 they organized a special uh, commission for uh, investigating the Nazi crimes. And um, a lot of those people who were involved in exhumating bodies, so, and uh, former prisoners of uh, Seret's camp, they gave their uh, um, witnesses' testimonies about the number of uh, victims. And uh, actually, main, main uh, numbers are concentrated uh, on these uh, witnesses. Uh, because after that, there were not not so many investigations and uh, um, it was more easy for Soviet uh, power to forget about Bob and Yar actually and uh, they just used this uh, utilitarism approach. They wanted to, to cr create a new, um, um, new industry, more uh, to industrialize this territory. That's why actually uh, the Bob and Yar was flew up with uh, the smart and in uh, 1961, on the 13th of uh, March 1961, the dam which was holding all the smart in the Babanyar, it just it was broken, and the huge flow, huge tsunami we can say of, of uh, garbage and waste uh, moved to the Kurenivka region, where we actually now and uh, a lot of uh, buildings were up to the deck uh, under the mud, a lot of people died, you mentioned 500, but it's uh, a little bit uh, low it's number, approximately one, one, one and a half thousand people, according to late uh, researchers, they died during this uh, tragedy. So it, it, it shows us also the b behavior of Soviet power, the attitude to the memory. So uh, no questions about uh, memorialization was raised, so this area was used just for such industrial um, needs and for creating the new building zones for the new settlers of Kyiv to expand Kyiv uh, city to make it more well, acceptable for life because it was rather you know um, it was a suburb it was suburbs of uh, of Kyiv so that's why Soviets began to create the new building complex, complexes and so on. So oh, after, after independence, yeah. um, how soon did Ukrainians st and Ukrainian Jews, of course, start planning this new Babanyar Memorial Center, which you're working on? Well, uh, it's a rather complicated topic, actually, the independence time, because um, the years of oblivion and uh, Soviet uh, policy, Soviet uh, memory policy, led to a little bit confusion in the society. And uh, in 1991, when Soviet Union collapsed, a lot of uh, relatives of those who died in Babi Yar, or those people who were actually um, 
who wanted to memorialize somehow this ter territory, they began to uh, work on uh, creating their own memorable places. We're talking about competition of memories. So different groups of people representing different groups of victims began to create their own, well, places for commemorating. The first uh, monument appeared in 1991. It was Menorah uh, Monument, which was actually dedicated to those Jewish people, the main victims of Babanyar who uh, perished in this place. And uh, uh, till today, during this uh, th th almost th 30 years, uh, approximately 30 different monuments, stones, memorable uh, sites were created by different groups, by Jews, by Romani people, by uh, Ukrainian nationalist um, organizations, um, and so on, so on. So there are approximately 30 different signs, um, memorials, uh, memory stones which um, were built. So it's like chaotic memorialization. Unfortunately, state did not um, show the um, particular, uh, show the, the uh, special attitude to, to this um, topic and uh, supported one in initiative, another one. So till today, we don't have the one actually um, strategy of the state according to this place. Actually, fr frankly speaking, uh, Ukraine has no, and the Ukrainian government has no uh, one policy according to the, um, the whole, poli uh, whole memory policy in Ukraine, especially about the World War II. Because the Ukrainian society even today is a little bit divided. So part of them thinking in more progressive way, another part uh, just um, Feel a little bit nostal uh, feel a bit, little bit nostalgic uh, for uh, Soviet uh, interpretation and, and Soviet um, dimension of uh, the history. So um, that's why it's rather hard to create um, one one specific uh, policy um, regarding Bab and Yar uh, territory. And uh, today, yeah, so. Um, we're working on the uh, create, creation of uh, memorial complex, Babanyar Memorial Center, which uh, will combine all this actually experiences uh, and will try to create the uh, special uh, place where all the um, victims would have uh, their voice, which will be represented, which will be um, discussed, which will be commemorated. Uh, commemorated somehow, and uh, uh, we want to create such a dialogue center which that it will be not only the museum but also the dialogue center to explain uh, our visitors, mainly Ukrainian citizens, how it could be, how it happened actually, and uh, what we can do to um, resist uh, totalitarian ideologies, different um, uh, the dictators, regimes, and so on. So how to how memory can help us not to repeat the mistakes of, uh, mistakes the, past. of the past. Yeah. Thank you very very much. We look forward Welcome. to seeing the memorial be com completed, and it's important that you're giving all the victims their voice. Yeah, of course. That was Alexander Pasternak, historian, research projects coordinator, Babinya Holocaust Memorial Center. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned for more with UATV. Yeah.